The fight against Joe Biden's student debt relief plan is essentially a litigious one-two punch. First, you got punch number one. Find someone who's actually injured by his plan so they can sue him. Then you got punch number two. Present the actual legal arguments for why student debt relief would be unconstitutional under Biden's current plan. Now conservatives, they're still winding up that first punch right now as they search the world for someone with legal standing. Biden on the other hand is currently bouncing around trying to dodge that first punch so that conservatives can't start making the knockout argument that all this is unconstitutional. Standing is a very important legal concept. You can't just sue something because you think it's wrong. It has to directly harm you. Just imagine, for example, that I see a video of someone in Wisconsin getting their fence damaged by a truck. I can't just randomly lawyer up and fight for justice on fence guy's side against the truck driver. Didn't affect me. Now it's surprisingly hard to find someone directly negatively affected by Joe Biden's student debt cancellation policy. But three different parties have emerged from the woodwork to fight against it. So let's play everyone's favorite game on that's all I have to say about that. Welcome to the oppression Olympics. Which one of these three injured parties will win gold and have actual legal standing to make arguments in court against Joe Biden's student loan cancellation policies? All right, our first contestant joins us from Indiana. Welcome, Frank Garrison. Now, Frank here finds himself in a particularly specific situation. You see, he lives in a state that says it will tax forgiven student debt as a sort of income. Yikes! Now it gets even worse for him. You see, he's enrolled in a state public employment program that's going to cancel all of his debt a few years down the line, tax free. So basically, this Joe Biden program is going to end up costing him a few thousand dollars in state taxes that he otherwise wouldn't have needed to pay. So. Does he qualify for standing? Ooh, I'm sorry, but you've been disqualified. My producers are now telling me that as soon as you filed that lawsuit, the Biden administration changed the policy a little bit so that you can opt out of debt loan forgiveness. Victor for you though, right? Just opt out and you're no longer injured by this policy. All right, next victim, private banks. If you go out and announce, you know how you owe a whole bunch of money, right? Well, I'm just going to shave $10,000 off the top of that debt. That's going to catch the ire of some of the people who own those student loans. Now, of course, it's all quite a bit more complicated than that simple statement. One of the lesser talked about features of Obamacare saw the federal government go out on their own little after school shopping spree. And basically in that shopping spree, we acquired more than 90% of all outstanding student loans. And on top of that, became an originator of pretty much all of the student loans for the next generation and everyone to borrow after that. You want to go to college? Well, we're going to make sure that you have access to a federal student loan if you want it. So a whole bunch of these loans are owned by the federal government and they can manage them however they want. But still. There's not an insignificant number of loans that are owned by private institutions under older government programs. Now the government and Biden's plan here was to allow these students whose loans are owned by private institutions to turn around and refinance those loans with the federal government. And once the federal government owned those loans, well, you can participate in our student loan forgiveness program. Now the private holders of these government backed student loans would see the refinancing happen are looking at this plan and saying, hey, there is some good money that we're going to make off of these students in the coming decades based off of these assets. Hands off of them, bub. We're not going to let them refinance. Now this program they're arguing injures them because they're losing some high performing and government guaranteed assets to the federal government. So, do these banks and other lending institutions have standing to sue in this case? Ooh, I'm sorry, you've also been disqualified. My same producers are telling me that as soon as you filed this suit, the Biden administration changed the policy. 
Now, if you're one of those students whose loans are still managed by private institutions, well, you're about to get a tuition-free class from the School of Hard Knocks. You no longer can refinance your loans with the government, and therefore, you can no longer qualify for the Student Debt Relief Program. Hey, victory for the private banks and lenders, right? You guys are no longer an injured party, so you can't sue the Biden administration. Now to the final contestant of the night, Arizona's Department of Justice. Now there's a program out there that says, if you work in public service, your student loans will eventually be forgiven. This was the same program that our first candidate was talking about when he sued Biden. Arizona, well their prosecutorial office uses that program to recruit debt laden graduates on the cheap. Sure we won't be able to pay you very much, but if you stick around for a few years, that $100,000 in student loans will be wiped out. Now Arizona's DOJ is concerned that if the federal government starts reducing people's debt burdens, well they're no longer going to be able to leverage a candidate's massive indebtedness to hire them at a steep, steep discount. More specifically, their concern is that, well, if debt isn't controlling a graduate's life, then they're probably going to opt for higher paying jobs in the private sector. Or God forbid, we're going to have to pay our employees a bit more to get them to keep working for us. So is this injurious enough to give Arizona standing to sue Joe Biden for student debt relief? Don't know. We'll see what a judge says. The Biden administration can't change this policy to accommodate that concern without sort of cancelling the whole policy altogether. So at the end of the day, what does any of this mean? Well, in my opinion, there are two key takeaways from this legal back and forth. First, the Biden administration really, really, really doesn't seem like they want this to go to court. Litigation brings it with the potential for temporary injunctions or other pauses, as well as the potential to just sort of completely lose the case. Once you pass the injurious phase and you actually find someone who is standing, the legal arguments start. And who oh boy, those legal arguments are a whole new bold game of constitutional arguments. To summarize an entire future episode in about 10 seconds, this whole thing boils down to a gray area in the law where Congress delegated the task of managing student loan payments for certain people during national emergencies to the executive branch. And the executive branch is saying, all the students, let's do this. If you regularly watch this channel, you'd know that I would not want to be the one making Biden's arguments in front of the Supreme Court right now. Executive power to interpret laws is not something they tend to empower these days. More on those arguments for both sides of that legal issue in a future episode. But the other interesting thing in researching this issue is just how hard it is to find an injured party based on this policy. I guess that's a good sign should this policy, in its more limited form, stay in place. Now you might be thinking to yourself that this is a very injurious thing for taxpayers because well, it's really expensive and someone has to pay for it. But unfortunately, or fortunately, your tax dollars going towards something you don't like doesn't immediately give you standing to challenge its constitutionality. For example, I can't suddenly sue the government for Guantanamo Bay's continued operation despite the fact that I am very much one of the millions of us currently funding it. So there you have it. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent non-partisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.